Morning guys, it's been a long week for me so far. I'm going to be putting like 80 hours in in less than a week, so I'm a little bit tired here. So anyways, I figured I'd spend a little bit of time, shoot a little video. I got nothing else going on right now. I probably should be sleeping, but whatever. I can sleep when I'm dead. So right here I got a set of plates. This is just scrap that I was teaching someone how to weld and just pulled out of the pile. So what I did is I just cleaned up the back side of it. There's still some mill scale, so it's probably not going to weld the cleanest. I'd recommend you grab yourself some plates and really clean it up a lot better than what I did here. But what I'm going to do today is show you, if you really want to learn how to TIG weld, and this really kind of holds true for any welding process, you just need to get a lot of time under the arc. Basically, the more beads that you pad on a flat plate and the straighter you make them, the longer you make them, and overall the more consistent they are, the better off you are for welding anything. Like if you want to go weld parts on your Jeep or your truck or something or weld something else, if you can't do a plate like this with nice straight lines that are long, consistent, and do fill the whole thing up with beads, you're kind of wasting your time going to something else, I guess. And I know it gets, it gets so annoying to sit and weld this because it sucks. I totally get that. Back when I was in school, I had to do probably 30 of these padding beads over and over and over and over. It just got to the point where all I wanted to do was anything but that. But once I got really good at this, almost everything else is easier than this. Like, honest to God, it's easier to do an overhead, overhead TIG weld than it is to pad 30 beads on this absolutely straight consistent. So anyways, let me get suited up here with my hood and gloves and let's start. We're all set up. I got my machine, 110 amps is what it's set at. Odds are I probably won't be anywhere near that, especially after the first or second pass once this plate heats up. I'm simply not going to need that much amperage. Realistically, I'll probably cool this plate down with water after three passes or so because it's just not going to weld decent after that. It's just going to be too heat soaked. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do that if you're actually welding something critical uh, for practice so you can get more time you know, under the arc. Definitely quenching the water isn't the end of the world. It'll help you get more practice in a certain amount of time. So anyways, let's start. I'm going to be doing high frequency start and let's just get to welding. Now I'm going to be welding towards me. Um, I can weld left hand, right hand, obviously better right hand than left hand, but should really practice any number of ways. This sucker's pretty hot. We're just going to take a look at this. So if you take a look at that, very small tiny bead, very low amperage. For a starter, I'm trying to put as little heat as possible in this just to get a lot of beads on this before I got to quench it. But Overall, not bad, definitely cold, definitely a small bead. So what I'm gonna do now is increase my amperage on my next pass and make the weld a little bit wider. When you're TIG welding, the higher the amperage, the wider your arc cone is, and the wider your arc cone is, the wider your weld is. So that was probably, I don't know, 70 amps, 60 amps, pretty low. We're gonna go up closer to like 100 see what happens.
Another pass done, real small pass. Let me not burn myself, it's getting pretty hot. So if you take a look, you can kind of see up here is a little bit better tied in. It's a little bit smoother. I'll try and tip that for you to see. Overall, not bad, a little bit inconsistent. You can definitely tell amperage is a little higher. So that was probably closer to 80 amps or so, roughly, so a little bit hotter. I'm going to let this cool for a couple seconds, and then uh, we'll go all the way to about 100, 110. You can tell the colors of it. It's a little bit harder to see, but you got your reds and blues, your tempering colors. That's kind of telling you how hot that is. So this area right here, which is a little bit harder for you to see, I'll try and get this, there we go. This straw yellowish color is gonna be the coldest temperature. Essentially your heat temper colors, and it's the same with stainless steel as it is with steel here. It goes from light straw, dark straw, a reddish color, then it goes to blue, rich blue, light blue. When you hit light blue, the next color typically is going to be dull gray, which you actually do see some on the edge here, not just where this was welded together. And then with like stainless steel, you get uh, really bad oxide like dull, dark gray. But these colors hold true for stainless and for steel. So this is really telling us our heat input is getting pretty high in this area because of the color, which is, well, we just put two welds down as kind of expected. So let me get this positioned and I'll run another weld. A little bit hotter. This plate's getting pretty heat soaked as well, but we'll run another weld and take a look. It's a little difficult to weld with a camera in your face, but... Definitely getting heat soaked now. Get my pliers here. Whew, that son of a bitch is hot. All right, if you take a look here, got a third beat on this. Definitely a little wider. This is around 90 amps or so. You can see there's a little bit of inconsistency here, see here, which that's just followed us since the second pass wasn't really that consistent. But overall, pretty equal in width and height, fairly straight. Definitely could do a little bit better on that. But again, this is just practice. A lot harder than you would suspect with the camera in front of you. So I'm going to let that cool down and come back. We'll do another pass on it. Let this thing cool down quite a bit. I brushed the side that we're welding on with a steel wire bristle brush. One thing that a lot of people, I guess, don't do with TIG is they don't clean after each pass. And yeah, I know that it's a lot cleaner of a finished weld than say MIG welding is, definitely say stick, but you gotta buff it off. There's still silicone deposits or silica silicone silica deposits on it and there's also um, a form of mill scale when the steel is hot and is exposed to oxygen so let's take a look what we got here again not my best work I'll blame the camera being in my face but you can see like along this toe here didn't really flow it in too well over to the other middle bead the second bead but overall not bad it's fairly straight, fairly consistent. And that's really the hard part about welding, like learning to weld. If you can't stack bead on bead like this in a straight line, everything else is going to be so much harder. Like if you have to do a multi-pass weld on something, how are you going to stack three, four, or five welds in a small area unless you can overlap them on a flat plate? So you really want to focus on doing this right like fill up multiple of these with super straight lines super consistent 
And once you get six, seven of these just like that, then go and look at doing lap welds or fillet welds. If you can't fill a plate like this out, I'm not joking, like everything else is just going to be way harder than it has to be. And at some point, you're going to have to learn this. So either learn it up front, get it out of the way, and then you're going to be great at everything else, or don't do this. And then when you get to harder stuff that requires multiple passes, you're going to spend so much time doing that, and you're just wasting your time. Especially for you guys out there that are like your home hobbyists where you don't have a whole lot of money for materials. Make the best use out of what you have. So put bead on bead on plate. So let me grab another filler rod here. Let's run another couple passes on this and see where I'm at. I'm going to be running about 100, 110 amps this time. I'm going to run pretty much full pedal. I have the machine at 110. Now, if you notice there, I stayed at the end of the weld and kept my gas cup on that, kept the gas flowing. Probably was pretty hard for you to see what was going on because of the camera angle. But that end of that weld, because it was near the end of the plate, had there was nowhere for that heat to escape the plate or to basically propagate from there. So it got really hot and was just red hot, like visibly hot. So you want to keep that covered with your shielding gas. So you, at the end of the weld, you just want to sit there, hold it. Now I reinitiated the arc at the end. The reason for that was it started the gas timer over on the welder. So your post flow. My machine does have adjustable post flow, but from habits from other welders that I own that you didn't have adjustable, I just would always restrike the arc on it in order to get the flow timer to start over. This one I could just dial it up a little bit, but again, I'm just used to doing it the old school method. So this thing obviously is too hot for me to hold. So let's get these trusty pliers out so I don't burn myself. Now, when you take a look at this, Definitely a lot wider. I was full pedal at 100 amps, so I must have been a little bit less than full pedal on the previous weld. It's, again, very straight. A couple bobbles in there. A little bit better tie-in on the toes, simply because it's running at a higher amperage, so it flowed over a lot nicer. My overlap is about 50% to the previous bead, which that's about what you want. I didn't blow the end of the plate off. So that's good. Overall, not bad. This is what you should be shooting for. So we got uh, four passes on this. First was a little too cold. Second, third, a little bit too cold. Fourth, decent. Fifth, um, or actually, yeah, fifth, uh, a little bit better there. Or actually, I only laid four passes. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, not looking too bad. I'm going to let this cool down again and We'll run a couple more. We got this sucker cooled down now. Brushed it up again. I'll give you a little shot of it. Pretty clean. Let's start running some more passes. Wrap that guy up. Now I purposefully ran hotter on this with a little bit longer of an arc gap 
to kind of show you what happens. Actually, I'll brush this just so a little bit easier to see. If you take a look there, you can see the start of the weld looks very much like the previous one. And then after about halfway, it really flattens out and widens out because the amperage was a lot higher. Now, I suspect when I flip this over, we're going to see penetration through the back side of this. And, well, very little. You can kind of see came through a little bit there. Not really too much. I'm kind of surprised. Whoa. Some bitch is hot. Give me a little pointer here. But, yeah, definitely a lot wider, a lot flatter has a duller appearance once I brushed it, as you can see there. But overall, pretty consistent in width, in height. This is a case of where, had I been pushing more filler into it, it would have probably turned out a little bit better and it wouldn't have been as flat. It would have been humped up a little bit. But again, for what you're looking at doing, focus on the consistency and width more than anything. Let's run another pass. Got this sucker cooled down. You can see a little bit duller appearance due to the heat input. It also, as we get closer to this edge right here, it's going to take a lot less heat to run a bead. Now we're adding metal here, so that's thickness of metal that will absorb heat as a heat sink. But the further we are here, the less amperage it's going to take. So let me set this down again. And let's do another pass. So now, used way too much heat. You could kind of tell at the end, I didn't even bother to hold the post flow on it. Literally, like the last inch, inch and a quarter of the weld was glowing orange red because of the amount of heat that was going into it. So this, again, same 100 amps or 110 amps. But even though this plate was cold, it simply was too much based on the fact that there's no heat sink on that top edge. You can see how wide the weld is. It's not very straight either. That's me. I'll blame, blame the cameraman. But you can see how the ripple pattern is not really as distinguishable. I mean, there's still ripples there, but it's kind of starting to get overall fairly flat and slick. That's a, another indicator that you're running higher amperage, possibly too high of amperage. Now this is only eighth inch material. It doesn't really take much to overheat this. If I was welding quarter inch or something three eighths, it could almost take unlimited amounts of heat when it's cold. But being that this stuff is a little thinner, can't really take the heat. Now let's flip it over and we can definitely see so there's some actual punch through penetration on half of it where it actually melted through and it definitely was close. Now one thing you're going to notice on a flat plate like this it doesn't really take that much amperage to get a good bead on it. If you're actually trying to join two pieces of metal together it's going to take more amperage than what a bead on plate takes. And the reason is, is that you effectively have two heat sinks that are going to pull that heat away from your weld pool. Here we only have one heat sink. And especially when we got down in this corner, there's no metal here or here to pull the heat out of that weld pool. So it's going to take a lot less heat. Now, when you're less experienced than I am, 
What's going to happen is, is when you get to the end, you're going to tend to blow it out, mainly with MIG and stick, less so with TIG, but that heat carries over so bad that it's just hard to control. Now, I've had so much practice with TIG welding that I can get to the end even when it's super hot and still taper out of the arc and make it work, but obviously we should have slowed down on the, the gas pedal and decreased the amperage a little bit during this. Um, again, it all depends on what you're doing. If you actually want to weld something that needs to be strong, using heat is imperative. You want the penetration from it. If you're trying to do like I do and make stainless steel artwork, you're more concerned over consistent heat than you are uh, penetration, I guess. So you can control the colors. So anyways, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let this completely cool off. I'm going to run another pass on the edge and I'm going to control the amperage. So hopefully we can get less of a flat bead, a better looking bead, even though we're right on the edge. It's going to take some, some skill definitely, but we're going to try that once this cools down. Well, I clean this up. It's nice and cool. Won't burn myself holding it. Again, you can see how flat and almost, it's not, it doesn't have ripples, but kind of looks like a mini 7018 bead. And that's just because of how much heat is in it or was in it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a bead, which is even closer to the edge. I'm going to control my amperage better and see if I can't run a cleaner bead along that edge and not blow it off and not have it completely smoking red hot. <laughs> so let's start. Another thing I'm going to do now that I can think of it, I'm going to put a piece of metal on here to make a better ground path just to put some weight on it. You probably didn't hear in the previous arc videos this thing was rattling which you get that a lot with stainless steel especially, but with steel you can get it. And that's from an ineffective ground. And since this plate is warped, it kind of does this. Well, that can be pretty bad depending on what you're welding on, especially if it actually loses the ground contact. So what we're going to do is just put that on there to help it along a little bit. And actually, I'll position it right there. All right, now we're going to start. My big head might get in the way here, so apologies for that. I'm actually, it might not look like it, but my face is about at least a foot away from it, probably a little bit longer. Just looks like I'm closer. Alrighty. Oh, you know, I'll grab it by the other end. Now, if you look at that, it's a little bit narrower of a weld. Definitely was run hot enough to where the toes tied in nice. As you can see, first few welds are pretty straight. Once I started going a little bit crooked halfway through, like at pass three, it kind of followed it. And now it's less than straight. So there's a lot of ways I could have fixed that for this. But again, I blame it more on the camera than anything. But definitely hotter than the first few passes still. The ripples are less distinct. However, I was only using maybe 60 amps to weld that and any less I would have had issues with the filler rod sticking, I think, since I'm using 1 16th rod. But I was able to successfully do a little weld bead right on the edge there where it doesn't take much amperage. Another thing worth noting here, part of the reason why this dull gray color is on there is due to inadequate gas shielding. I know this is going to kind of be controversial, and I guess I don't really care, but I'm just going to say it. And that's a lot of people weld steel 
especially thinner steel like this with too small of a gas cup. I'm using a number eight and around 15 CFH, 12 CFH, somewhere in there for gas flow. Well, if I went up to a number 12 cup with like, I don't know, 25 to 30 CFH, this whole weld wouldn't be nearly as dull. Not to mention it would just appearance wise would probably be better, including maybe the ripples would be more noticeable. Not that that's a huge deal. Again, that's mainly for my artwork purposes, but welding this with a number 12 cup would probably give better results. So what I'm gonna end up doing is for the final pass, I'm gonna run right here down the middle on this end, not over here. I'm gonna to switch to a number 12 cup at a lot higher CFH and let's see what it looks like on steel with better gas shielding. Well, I had that recorded and my fucking microphone crapped out on me for some reason. Gotta love technology. So this was the last weld I put down you didn't see it because I didn't really record it. I used a number 12 gas cup on it. And I'll bring this up so you guys can see. And you notice, and I haven't cleaned this at all, but this last weld is a lot shinier than over here. Now, part of that is this area is a better heat sink so it could pull the heat out, but most of it has to do with the gas coverage. I know it's not really a popular opinion, but if you're going to weld thicker steel, like this is eighth inch or so and higher anywhere, like in hundred amps plus, you really should have at least a number 10, if not a number 12 gas cup, if you want to have a good looking bead when you're done, simply put a seven number seven or number eight cup just doesn't have the shielding necessary, but overall, Pretty consistent in width. There's a couple of bobbles in there just because these are actually two plates welded together and there was a, essentially a groove still left in there from lack of fusion and obviously didn't keep it that straight. But the point of this is to pad beads roughly half overlapping consistently. Now, even I could use practice and I TIG weld art all the time. Uh, pretty much anyone can use practice, which is why I'm going to take this tomorrow when I get home and hopefully get some sleep and I'm going to finish welding this all the way out and I'll share a picture of it. But uh, overall, get yourself some steel, take your welder, do some practice. It's very cheap, it's affordable and if you can do this well, everything else becomes so much easier. Thanks for watching. Feel free to send me a message or a request for a video. I'll try and help you guys out as much as I can. I don't really got a lot going on in my life right now. So if I can help someone out, it'd mean a lot to me. Thanks.